Well, Mike, here we go. We've got quite a lineup for this show here. we got Mike Penobler and Jeff Hoagland as our first fight. And then, of course, Jeremy Jackson, Zach Light, Adam Lynn, Sean Beckett, Nick Diaz, and Blaine Tyler. That's quite a lineup. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be an exciting fight. We've got, uh, we've got guys from all over uh, Southern California and the Central Valley. Uh, some good, young, up-and-coming fighters. Should be interesting. Any predictions? Uh, no, not really. I think these can go either way. Well, let's see who we have first. Looks like uh, Penobler's coming out. And uh, Penobler is fighting out of... Uh, Mike Penobler's fighting out of the Shark Tank out of Southern California. That's Eddie Miller's school. Well, that school puts out some banners, so we should see some action here. Yeah, the Shark Tank fighters are pretty exciting. They pretty much you call them up, they show up to fight. There's not a lot of playing around with them. Do you know much about uh, you know, his past his opponents? And I mean, you, because you, you actually put this card together, didn't you? Yeah, that's correct. So how much do you know about uh, Mike? I mean, is it a, what's his game? He's an up-and-coming fighter. He's got uh, good submissions, but uh, he's not afraid to bang on his feet either. He's got pretty decent stand-up skills, and he's uh, just building his experience level. Well, he looks ready tonight. There's our referee, Josh Rosenthal. I guess he's uh, Yoshi, right? Yeah, <laughs> Yoshi. That's correct. Josh, a great guy. Oh, he sure is. Great ref. He's talking to Mike right now. Yeah, Mike was very excited about coming up and uh, fighting on our show here. He'll be fighting out of San Bernardino, California, and he is a specialist in submission wrestling. He comes into the battle god at 5 feet 9 inches tall, already 169 pounds. He has a professional record of one win, zero losses, and one tie. He is a past junior college state champion in wrestling. Welcome, Mike. Well, he looks ready, that's for sure. I don't know how these guys are doing it. It is freezing out here, and there they are in shorts. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I think it's about 60 degrees right now. Oh, no way, dude. And it's the beginning of the evening, so I imagine look it's going to Take a close look at my shirt here. <laughs> Does this look like 60-degree uh, thermostats to you? No, this is much colder. Yeah, I got to tell you, I got to give it to Ultimate Athlete and their cage maidens. Although they're not really cage maidens in this case, since we're talking about... A, uh, an octagon-shaped boxing ring, or I guess uh, it's formally known as the Battle Gun. Yeah, Jeff Weller coined that phrase. It's uh, known as the Battle Gun. It's one of the first octagon-shaped rings in the U.S. In fact, I think it may be the first. No, I've seen it. I think they're using it on the East Coast a little bit. And introducing his opponent in the blue corner. He's representing Team Voodoo. He'll be fighting out of Turlock, California, and his style is cage fighting. He enters the battle god at 5 feet 7 inches tall, 169 pounds. He's a master professional record of 3 wins, no losses, no draws. Welcome, Jeff Did you sure see that smoke rolling in? Team Voodoo, Jeff Hoagland. Uh, team Voodoo, that's uh, Northern California, fairly up near Modesto, right? Isn't that Gene Fields' team? Yeah, it's Gene Fields' school, and I believe he's got schools in Modesto, Turlock, and I think in series. Well, Jeff's out of the Turlock school. Let's see what they have. Uh, see what they have to offer here. Hoagland, of course, takes the first swing and right to the mat. Yeah, I couldn't tell if he landed that knee or not, and Mike took him down. Let's see uh, what the ground game looks like here. Jeff's got an open guard. Mike not really looking to pass yet here. And since this is a tournament format, I think uh, all the fighters are going to be looking for quick finishes. They want to keep their energy level up. Yep, the winner will have to fight twice more this evening. And God, do I hope it doesn't get any colder. Well, considering it's early in the evening, I, I think you're uh, going to have some bad luck, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's working out of the closed guard now. Mike uh, was making an attempt to pass. Now he's uh, working in the guard. Looks like Jeff's opening up again. You can hear Josh telling him to keep it moving. Uh, 
Not a whole lot going on right here. If uh, this continues, you can expect Josh to stand it up. Here we go. Mike's working for a pass. Oh. oh, this does not look good for Jeff. There we go. Nice reversal. He's on top. We'll see what uh, Mike's guard game looks like. Team Voodoo, are they a, a stand-up camp, all-round, um, submission wrestling? What, what, what's the Team Voodoo forte, team, do you know? Team Voodoo is mixed. Uh, primar primarily they do, uh, oh, almost an arm bar there. Primarily most of the fighters, I believe, are kickboxers, but Gene's got several MMA fighters and more coming. Uh, in fact, I believe one of his fighters is a K-1 fighter. His name escapes me at the moment. Well, there you go. You predicted it. Josh is standing him back up again. Well, the fighters are really going to have to demonstrate uh, that they're trying to progress on the ground or they are going to get stood up. A couple nice oh. kicks. Ow. Good right hand oh, by Mike. Mike. And Mike shoots. Down again. Down we go. Looks like uh, Mike's working for the can opener there. A little bit of a neck crank. I can't really see from this angle. No, no, he's just, uh, he's tied up in the guard right there. Penalver certainly has the takedowns. Yeah, he's got a wrestling base. What he needs to do right here is he needs to be trying to get past that guard. Good way to do that is to punch down, but uh, Jeff's tying up his arms pretty well. Jeff needs to be looking for a sweep or a submission out of the guard. Yep. Even the crowd, you can hear him yelling, stand him up. Come on, we need some little bit of activity or they might be stood up again. Well, Jeff's working to, uh, I think he's really trying to set up a, a sweep here. And Mike has to be cautious, but he needs to get past that guard. couple quick blows from the guard up from Jeff more of the activities coming from Jeff in the guard than actually from Mike above and right back down again and there we go heel hook I don't know if Jeff's going to, Jeff needs to get up on top of Mike to def and there it and is. There it is. Tap out. Mike Tanobler goes to the semifinals. And with the replay, we can see that it, it, it tempts a knee there. It takes him down. Arm bar attempt. Didn't get it. Nice move at the back, but great reversal here by Jeff. And there it is. Well, it looks like Mike should be uh, pretty well refreshed for the next round since uh, this one didn't, didn't look like it took too much out of him. That hit right there, by the way, was a solid one. Did you hear that? Just thump. 53 in the first round, advancing to our semis and our eight man from the red corner, Mike Penabler. Oh, Mike did it. So Mike's going to be moving up to the next bracket. And as you see, the next fight is going to be Jeremy Jackson versus Zach Knight. And uh, Zach came from Team Punishment, and Jeremy... Jeremy is from Team Freedom. That was uh, Robert Ferguson's school. And uh, both fighters, uh, good, good fighters, well-rounded. Uh, Zach being more of a uh, wrestler ground and pound, just coming off a uh, controversial loss in Connecticut. But you and I were both there, and even though his ground or his uh, his forte may be ground fighting, that was a slugfest at WC4. Yeah, Zach is uh, not afraid to trade punches. He's uh, big on takedowns and followed up by heavy blows. I'll tell you that WC5 show, or actually WC4 in Connecticut, I believe it's Sun. Uh, you and I both were ringside, and Zach, it was just non-stop trading punches. It was one of the most aggressive slugfests I have ever witnessed. Yeah, that was a that was a great fight. Jeremy Jackson also very exciting. Jeremy is a very well-rounded technical fighter. Well, let's see what happens here. And Zach's Ladies taking his time getting into the ring. In our second quarterfinal of the evening of our eight-man tournament, entering the battle gone to my left in the red corner. He is representing the world-known Team Punishment. He'll be fighting out of Claro, California. 
and his fighting style is submission wrestling. He enters the battle gone at 5 feet 8 inches tall, 169 pounds. He's amassed a professional record of 5 wins, 2 losses, no draws, and he is the former Super Brawl champion and the Iowa Challenge champion. Welcome, Mr. Zach Lyon. Well, let's hope Zach looks as, even though he lost, uh, let's hope he looks as good as he did at WEC4. I think he will. He looks in excellent shape, and uh, like I said, his style, he's very exciting. Big, powerful takedowns and uh, heavy blows. Incredible takedowns. And here comes the Scorpion himself, Jeremy Jackson. But Jeremy is just a very well-rounded fighter. He's got uh, excellent ground skills. He has heavy hands standing up. Last fight I saw him in was in uh, Porterville at an IFC show. And uh, just heavy hands knocked his opponent out. What's his ground like, you know? Yeah, very technical, very skilled. Well, we're about to see. I don't know if... Uh does he have a, as far as you know, does he have an opponent similar to Zach Light or with Zach Light's experience? No, I think Zach's going to be his biggest opponent so far. Uh, Zach's actually fought on the UFC. Um, he's he's a very powerful fighter. This is a step up for Jeremy, but uh, he looks in great shape, and I think he's ready for it. He's got a very clear head in the ring. He's a thinking fighter and, and now, very skilled. Introducing his he's going to go a long way. my right in the blue corner. He represents Team Freedom. He'll be fighting out of Imperial, California. His fighting style, submission wrestling. He enters the battle gone at 5 feet 10 inches tall, 169 ready to go pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of two wins, two losses, no draws. He is the Central Plains Wrestling Champion. Welcome, Jeremy the Scorpion. Jackson. This may be interesting. We both have uh, wrestling backgrounds. Jeremy, Central State, they said, uh, Central State champion. That's well. Let's let's see what happens here. Josh getting ready to start him off. Oh, there it is. That's right out of the gate. Nice left hand by uh, Jeremy, but Zach goes right for the takedown. Jeremy's coming up, and he goes right for the arm bar. Excellent. Nice slam defense uh, by Zach here. Boom. Nice show of strength. Nice slam down. Doesn't appear to phase Jeremy at all. Nope. He's back in close guard. Zach's going to start softening up a little bit. Jeremy's trying to hip out again there, looking for another submission. And back to close guard. Those are some heavy blows that Zach's dropping there. Those will take the effect if this goes a distance. Absolutely. There we go. Zach's working a neck crank. I believe the wrestler's called out a can opener. He's trying to force that guard open. Jeremy striking from the ground there. Both fighters looking very calm. Zach's coming up to punch open the guard. Jeremy's trying to keep him down. It's like Zach's expending a lot of energy here. Um, yeah, I think Zach wants to finish this fight quickly. I don't think Jeremy's going to allow that, though. <laughs> All right, Zach moving around. Almost past his guard. There. Nice move back to half guard by Jeremy. Jeremy's got the underhooks. We could see a sweep coming here. I don't know. Zach has an excellent base. Nope, and we're back to close guard. A lot of activity there, though. Yeah, both fighters definitely working to progress. Oh, nice there's a, there's a team punishment move if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah. Forearm and elbows from the guard. Jeremy's trying to pyramid up again, looking for that submission. Another attempt at the uh, forearm. Oh. Jacks up. Let's see if Jeremy can get to his feet. This is very dangerous. A lot of fighters get hurt trying to come to their feet right here. It takes a lot of skill to get up. A lot of fighters just remain down. And he's up. Good. Crowd is just letting loose. This is great. Oh, both fighters exchanging good sharp blows. 
pretty evenly matched so far. There's another takedown attempt by Zach. We're out of the clinch. Both fighters throwing knees. And just a power takedown there. Yep. Zach sure has those takedowns down, I guess. <laughs> takedowns down. There you go. Does. Yeah, that's definitely one of his fortes. In fact, I believe when he fought Tony Frickland, I don't think Tony Frickland had ever been taken down before. He took him down, what, twice, three times? Three times, I Solid, think. Solid, too. Double A. Here we go. Jeremy's again in the closed guard. I think Zach's maybe a little frustrated here. Not quite sure what he, he the corner needs to get. Instructions to Jeremy and Zach. Jeremy's going to be looking for another submission there. Yep, his corner's yelling to try to work his way up. Zach gave him a lot of space, and Jeremy kicked him off, and he's back up. Both times, Jeremy got a kick in before he got back on his feet. Not that it had much effect, but... It's enough to keep him back. Exactly. Oh, oh, nice. Nice attempt at a high kick. High round kick, and Zach was waiting for it. Took him straight down again. Good fight so far. Very evenly matched in different styles. It's exciting. I, I really couldn't call this one. I don't know. Uh, I really couldn't predict a winner here. Jeremy does a good job while he's on his back every time Zach stands up. Yep. I think Zach got the best of that little trade. Both fighters stalking each other. Another nice uh, front round kick. And Zach returned the favor. It's solid, too. You can hear it. Nice high kick. Zach answers with the uh, right hand to the face. Jeremy back to the legs. Those leg kicks will take their toll. Yeah, Jeremy's an excellent kickboxer. Both fighters stalking, looking for an opening. I think Zach's looking for that takedown, trying to set Jeremy up. Zach better watch those hands. There they are. Zach's not afraid to throw either. No, like I was saying earlier, he traded with Frickman in the WC4. Nice, we're going in. Jeremy's looking for the guillotine. And Another Zach's hard no. takedown. Back in the closed guard. Yeah, and there we go. End Into of round the one. first round. Excellent fight. Of our first round. I don't know at this point. I really don't know. It looks pretty even. That was pretty even. Zach definitely... Uh, Definitely had the uh, the takedowns. I'd have to give Jeremy a little bit more on his feet. And uh, really nice on submission. And Robert Ferguson wearing the Superman hat. Well, Robert, from where we're sitting, it doesn't appear as if either man has much damage. Just maybe a little winded. No, both these guys are uh, professional fighters, definitely. One thing's for sure, the, the crowd sure likes the, the ring girls there. Yeah, they're here. Performing. Apparently the cameraman does too. <laughs> yeah. They're here performing for the Queen of the Mountain tournament as well. All right, well, let's get started with another round. Round two underway. Oh. Boy, look at those hands. Fast. Jeremy Zach goes for the with single. another takedown attempt. And Zach goes for the single leg. Jeremy oh. oh, big left hand. Big. Zach, Zach is in trouble. Big trouble. Trying for an ankle pick here. He's not uh, doing it. Josh is going to have to step in there pretty quick here unless he yeah. does something to defend himself. No, he's going to get hurt. They need to stop it here now. Yep, that's oh, it. Good call, Josh. Yep. Wow, what is that? Oh, stumbling. He's stumbling. Oh, he just ran into the guys. Zach is dazed. And let's see if we get it here. Nice. Oh, Zach's takedowns are sweet. Excellent arm bar. That was an even match. Yeah. I'd have to say that was very close. Jeremy got the best. That left hand is what did it. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see if we... Uh, Nick Diaz is a very similar fighter. And I don't know much about Blaine. I've never seen him fight other than he's an 8-0 Muay Thai fighter. But I'm really looking forward to seeing Nick take on uh, Jeremy if it goes to that. Oh, if that lineup happens, that's going to be great. I'm actually very excited so about seeing Blaine left Tyler. There. Oh, too. there it is right there. Yeah. Boy, Jeremy, same thing in Porterville. Jeremy just has really heavy hands. That left hand is just brutal. The winner, and advancing to our semifinals, Jeremy the Scorpion Jackson. Well, Jeremy, 
definitely had to put more into that than Mike Penobler did in his first. But we're going to take on to the next one, Adam Lynn. Adam Lynn, out of the next generation, is Chris Brennan's school. Adam Lynn's a, a good, good, well-rounded fighter, but more uh, into the jiu-jitsu game. And he's a, he's a former UO fighter veteran, fought in uh, the Gathering. Yeah, the Gathering in uh, Chicago. No, that was uh, oh, Chicago. The Gathering yeah. was down there uh, in the Palm Springs. That's right, the, uh, the infamous show in Palm Springs. Yes, yeah. The, <laughs> it's enough said about that. The show itself was incredible. And I thought Adam did a fabulous job. Yeah, in fact, uh, when... Uh, but a new referee for this round. It looks like uh, Herb Dean is stepping in. Herb Dean is a uh, king of the cage arts fight fans. referee. In our third quarterfinal of our eight-man tournament, introducing first to my left in the red corner. He represents the next generation fight team. He fights out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and his fighting style, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He is 5 feet 8 inches tall, a ripped 169 pounds. He's amassed a mixed martial arts record of two wins, one draw, no losses. Please welcome King of the Cage veteran, Adam Lynn. All right, coming out now we have Sean Beckett from Team Fusion in Chico, California. This is a fairly young team. Uh, a lot of new up-and-coming fighters. Yeah, but uh, they're great. They'll go anywhere in the state, and they want to fight. They want to gain experience, and I think we're going to be seeing a lot of them in the future. Sean Beckett is just a great guy. They're mainly submission fighters out of uh, Team Fusion, and in fact, they train themselves. I certainly like their apparel. Yeah. <laughs> You wouldn't be prejudiced there, would you? Uh, no, maybe a little. But hey, what can I say? And introducing his opponent. He represents the up-and-coming Fusion Fight Team. He'll be fighting out of Chico, California. His fighting style, submission fighting. He enters the battle gun at 5 feet 5 inches tall, 169 pounds. His professional record, one win, one loss. Please welcome Sean Venom Beckett. Sean's a great guy. I talked to him before the fight. Just easy going, level headed. I'm interested to see him fight here. I've, uh, I don't think I've ever seen him live before. He really wanted a shot at this as well. Yeah, he when when we were talking to his uh, manager, he was just really pushing. He really wanted in this show. Well, Adam gets takedown. He's got half guard here. Adam very experienced on the ground here, probably more experienced than Sean. We'll see what uh, happens. Adam looking to pass the half guard. Next generation puts out some great fighters. Yeah, Chris Brennan school really. Tough, tough guys. Adam working a little soften up. He's really looking to clear those legs of Sean's and uh, get a position of side controller up in the full mount. Neither one of them are really getting anything in there because they're so tightly gripped. Sean needs to be looking for a sweep here or to get back to full guard and then look for a submission. Here comes Adam coming around. And Adam's oh, attempted a triangle, but uh, Sean doesn't have it. Nice try, though. <laughs> Looking to get to Adam's his feet. stalking him as he backs away. Well, that's a really dangerous spot for those fighters when they're first transitioning up to their feet. A little boxing here, but uh, I think both fighters want it on the ground, really. Adam comes down into half guard. How softly they went down that time. I mean, they just kind of sat back down on the mat. Yeah, basically just a trip takedown. The jiu-jitsu guys' takedowns are not big power slams like wrestlers. Adam's now got side control and starting to drop some knees. 
Knees are legal in the IFC sanctioned uh, bouts, including knees to the uh, side of the head and the face when your opponent's on the ground. You uh, can't strike directly to the skull, neck, or spine, to the top of the skull, I mean, but uh, you can knee to the face on the ground. I believe this is the first uh, UA fighting event sanctioned by the IFC. Yeah, it is. Well, let's see how it goes. Hopefully we can have more of those. That'd be great. They have a great team, the IFC. Yeah, Paul Smith, Grandpa and that crew, they're fantastic. Jeff Weller, Vinny. Adam here is dropping some big knees from side control. He's got the cross side there, and he moves oh. into full mount. full mount. Sean needs to get busy here. He really needs to start bridging or looking for an elbow escape. This is a bad position to be in, especially with Adam. So bridging and elbow escape, are those the only two options? I mean, they're, well, no, what there's, are Sean's options here? Well, they're, they're different options that he can use to get out of the mount, but uh, this is what he has to be careful of. Well, Roland, <laughs> given his back like that, it's probably not... Yeah, all of them. Uh, that's a bad position to be in, being mounted, and there is some risk in escaping it, but uh, if you don't escape it, you're done. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. He tried to roll out of it. Adam's got his back. Escaping the ring is one way to get out of it. Uh, <laughs> We have rules here on that if they leave the mat, they're stood back up. They didn't, there's no uh, no being drugged to the center again, correct? That is correct. Yeah, if they uh, get into a position where there could be danger of coming out of the ring, they will be stood back up irregardless of position. And penalized if, <coughs> uh, if they're doing it deliberately. Yeah, that's correct. If any fighter tries to escape the ring to escape a position, uh, he will be penalized. That was a good call by Herb, standing back up again, as we just described. Quick leg kicks by Sean. Doesn't appear Sean's putting too much into him, just kind of checking for distance, maybe. Yeah, not, he's using it like a jab. It's not really his forte. Boy, he's really performing very well, I mean, against uh, somebody of Adam Lynch caliber, and he's excited to get in here and uh, mix it up with Adam. Back oh. down, I think that was more Sean jumping to the guard. It's got Adam back in his full guard. It's got him tied up. Adam looking for that shoulder punch. How effective do you think that uh, shoulder punch is? And that that's a uh, kind of a Randy Couture. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get knockouts out of it, but certainly that's very powerful when you drive down right into their face. Um, it's definitely going to cause them to react, which is what he's looking for. Right now, it's like a chess game. They're looking to cause the other guy to make a move that they can uh, take advantage of. Looks like Adam's going to be standing up. There he goes. Adam's looking to, to get past the legs of Sean. And, and there he, he does goes. It right there. Back into the full mount <clears throat> and end of the first round. Well, that was beautiful Toreador pass right to full mount, but just at the wrong time. <laughs> there's one, okay. of our, there's yes. one of our cage maiden uh, competitors right there. Beautiful girl. Absolutely. You know, I've seen her at a couple of IFC shows. Uh, I think Options, who recently changed their name to Continental Talent Agency, are providing the ladies this evening. And I must say they have some beautiful ladies. Yeah, they do. Here we go. Round, Round two. two. Both fighters exchanging some light kicks. Again, I think uh, Sean's going to be looking to jump to guard, and Adam's going to be looking to, to take him down. But then again, maybe they'll make liars of me. Oh, big right hand. Didn't score. Adam's got double unders. And there it is. He's going for the trip takedown. Sean defends. Sean defending well. Adam's really driving, trying to take that. Knees, and there it is. Nice trip takedown into half guard. Sean really needs to start moving here and get Adam back into full guard, or he's going to get mounted again. Sean's doing a great job. Yeah, he's performing very well. Adam's just like a machine. He's uh, very professional about his uh, fight career. And there he is working to bring the knee through. And looks and like he's going to do it again. He's attempting to throw it over. Here he goes. He's got uh, side control. He's in cross-side position. Probably knees. Yep, there we go. Sean trying to defend the mount. He doesn't want Adam getting full mount again. That's why his knee's up like that. 
What's a better position for Adam? It, this position here or the full mount? He's up, well, obviously full mount, there he goes. <laughs> Thank you, Adam, you <laughs> answered my question for me. Uh-oh. Adam dropping some bombs and gets it oh, back again. Oh, gets it back again, and... Good, uh, month of Leon, that's it. and oh, there it. it is, all done. Excellent performance by Sean. Adam progresses to the semis. Very uh, matter-of-fact-like manner. So now we have uh, Mike Penobler, Adam Lynn, and Jeremy Jackson in the semis. This next, uh, this next battle will be a wild card to determine the last semifinal fighter, Nick Diaz versus Blaine Tyler. Nick, an extremely experienced fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, at 1.39 in the second round, the winner, advancing to the semis, it is Adam Lynn. I'll have to qualify what I just said. Nick is, uh, I believe, 2-0, but his skill level far surpasses what his record would uh, lead you to believe, as well as, I believe, he's only uh, 19 years old, yeah, 19 he's, or 20. He's young kid. Yeah, Long ways to go. Trains with Caesar Gracie and is just a phenom. Uh, Blaine Tyler trains with the Raw team. Steve Heath also. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, Blaine Tyler is an 8 no move tie fighter who's been training with Frank Trigg and Rico Chaparelli from Team Raw for his uh, submission game, and this will be his uh, MMA debut. Should be a very interesting... I think Blaine is going to try to keep it, his, keep it up on the feet. I would think uh, it would be in his best interest to keep it on his feet, but I'm not sure how long he's been tra training with Frank Trigg and Rico, but uh, certainly if you're going to have some instructors for the ground, they're uh, two of the best. So Nick D is coming in the ring now. Nick's a quiet kid. Very quiet, very large. Watch out of him before the fight. Just this is our final quarterfinal in our eight-man King of the Mountain tournament. Introducing in the red corner to my left, he represents the Caesar Gracie Fight Team. He fights and trains in Stockton, California. His Apparently, the crowd of fans of Caesar Gracie. He is six feet tall, 169 pounds, with a professional record of two wins, no losses. He is the U.S. Open Jiu-Jitsu Champion and the IFC number one contender. Please welcome to the battle gun, Nick Diaz! Yeah, Nick's been working on his uh, stand-up game, and he's uh, definitely got credible stand-up skills, good kicks, but uh, his clinch work and then his ground game is just phenomenal. I'm really looking forward to this. Blaine uh, yeah. is an impressive looking fighter. I have not seen him fight yet. Uh, and I, but with his record, and you uh, mentioned his stand up Muay Thai record, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, 8 0 is, uh, well, it is his first MMA day, uh, bout. Uh, 8 0 in Muay Thai is uh, nothing to be laughed at. He's uh, obviously going to be a very tough fighter. And Frank. Trig uh, and the Raw team definitely uh, put out tough ground, guys. Herb Dean will be repping this, uh, this bout. You can see from the, the layers and of clothing. Introducing I'm his opponent on. on my right in the blue corner. He represents the world famous Raw Fight Team. He fights and trains out of Hollywood, California. His fighting style, Muay Thai and submission fighting. He enters the battle gun at 5 feet 10 inches tall, 169 pounds. He has a master record of 8 wins, no losses in Muay Thai competition. Welcome Blaine Tyler. Blaine certainly looks ready. Yeah, he's definitely in shape. And conditioning is going to be a factor tonight. But uh, Nick is also in shape. This should be this should be a very good fight. Okay, here we go. Blaine just comes right out. Takes the center of the ring. Nick throws a kick. Blaine chops his base leg out from under him. Nick's back on his feet. Trading, and we're in the clinch. 
Looks like Blaine there is uh, certainly ready to go. I mean, he's coming out aggressive. Yeah, and Muay Thai fighters are uh, very experienced in the clinch, but it's a little bit different of a game. They are allowed takedowns, but <clears throat> not uh, not to the extent that uh, MMA fighters. Well, he's working it. He's, uh, Blaine needs to be very careful about exposing his back. He's getting half turned and he doesn't want Nick going under. That's dangerous right there if Nick goes, yeah, Nick tried to go under there. All right, we're back clinched up. That's just a matter of a difference between the uh, sports, and I'm sure Blaine will get that worked out. You're referring to his going over the top of Nick's... Yeah, grabbing Nick's head, that means Nick can slide under his arm and take his back. He needs to stay right here under the arm and keep Nick blocked from taking his back. Both fighters looking for a little bit of takedowns and trading knees. There we go. Nick's going to be looking to get this on the ground. Nick's getting those knees in there. But uh, Blaine continues to strike and there it is. Okay, let's see what uh, Blaine's ground game looks like. Not, uh, well, he was fully mounted. Nice reversal right oh, into nice. the arm bar almost. Just dropping some, some short elbows. Elbows there, yep. Nick's got full guard and he is very dangerous from this position. Blaine needs to be very careful. Nick's coming up, there it is. Good. There, he's got full arm bar. God, he's got the thing. Nope. There it there. is. He kicks oh, over. Oh, this is it. Nick was this waiting it. for it. There's Look at that. Full arm bar. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> come I on, can't believe Blaine. he's not submitting from that. Uh, Nick yelling that it's broken. The ref waiting to see. Blaine doesn't Blaine appear to doesn't be in. Appear. Yeah, he looks. You see his face from where we're sitting in it. And he's dropping some not bombs from that position. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how he's doing that. That arm was locked out. Boy, that is one tough guy. Transitions right back in. We've got a triangle choke going on now. What was his? What's, look at this. Back to arm bar. Wow. Blaine very... Blaine does not <laughs> seem to be affected by that at all. He's got quite the high tolerance of pain. I can't believe he escaped that arm bar. I don't think Nick can either. <laughs> We're back in full guard. Blaine trying to drop some short elbows again. And Nick right. is back on the arm. Although at this point, I think he's wondering what he needs to do to finish that. I don't know. You ever grappled with Gumby? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Blaine working to pass. Nick goes for a sweep, doesn't oh, get it, transitions to the back. back Both hooks in. Nick is just unbelievable on the ground, just phenomenal ground skills. And he's working for Kimura Lock from the back. Blaine's defending it. It's hard to see where he... He's trying to slide Nick down on his head, get him too high and pop out that back. But uh, Nick's working that arm, drops a couple bombs. Well, I don't think you'd call those bombs. But no, <laughs> looks like striking to the back of the head there. There you go. Boy, Blaine very, uh, appears very comfortable on the ground. It certainly has an incredible pain tolerance, and there it is. Nick's got Kimura right there. Looks like he has a good solid base, Blaine. Boy, that... Look at that. What is... I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> He's uh, got to be incredible stress on his shoulder at this point. Nick, uh, oh, okay. man. How, how elusive is that? <laughs> Nick's got to be oh, getting oh, frustrated at this point. There. That is deep. Well, I guess uh, Nick's just going to make his way through the submission hold and see which one works. Yeah, I think he's going to have to go through the encyclopedia. Unbelievable. Look, head down. I can't Look see if the him. arm's across, but, oh, man. Blaine picking him up to slam him. Nick defends. Picking him up by his neck, mind you. Look at him. He's just going to work his way out of that. And that is sunk in there. Unbelievable. Mounted triangle now. Let's see if he can get out. Exposes his back. Goes over. Now he's taking the arm. <laughs> Nick has got to be frustrated at this point. Wow. Man, look at that. Blaine stands right up. Like it was nothing. And there's Frank Trigg cornering him. Boy, I've never seen anybody <laughs> escape like that. 
Nick has got to be scratching his head here. It looked like we saw at least three solid submissions. A triangle, an arm bar, uh, what was the other one, a, a Kimura? Kimura lock, yeah, and just sweet transitions on Nick part, Nick's part, but... Uh, Wait a minute, what were we... Yeah, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought for a moment there. Working the crowd. She's also a uh, participant in the Queen of the Mountain competition. She models occasionally for uh, Ultimate Athlete Magazine as well. Yeah, that's correct. All right, here we go with round two. Let's see what this brings. Blaine again takes the center <laughs> of the ring. If it's anything like the first round, this is going to be good. Yeah, Nick's got to be wondering what he needs to do to, to put him away. <laughs> that was incredible. Blaine's looking a little winded. Wish we were sitting next to Nick's corner so we could have heard what they had to say during the break there. Oh, nice left hand by Nick. Blaine just throwing leg kicks at this point. As is his style. I'm sure Nick's going to be looking to get him down again. Nice left nice hand again. There. That's going there. Another nice one. combo. I think Blaine's a little gassed, and reasonably so. I had to take something out of him escaping those uh, submissions. They're not even attempting to escape them. I mean, I mean, actually. Yeah, really. Oh, look at that. Nice combination. And Blaine smiles. This is one tough cookie. Nick's going to, looks like, try to uh, work stand-up. <laughs> yeah, I think he's given up on the ground game. He says, yeah, submissions aren't working on this guy. I think I'll have to try to knock him out. <laughs> well, if his pain tolerance is anything like if it is on the ground, he's going to be a difficult guy to knock out. Yeah. Boy, Nick landed that combo, and he just smiled at him. I think he truly enjoyed it. Clinched up on the ropes. Nick and taking him down again. Down the ground. Well, let's see what Nick pulls out of his hat on this one. It's just wow, standard uh, AKP just, position. And, uh, uh, look at this. Full mount and just... Uh, Blaine, Blaine better do something here. He is in trouble. And Dean stepping in almost. Come on. He's not... There it is. There it is. Yep. Dean stepping in. Good call. Stop it. Yeah, I don't think Blaine was going to escape that. No, no. He wasn't taking care of himself. Well, Nick progresses to the... Uh, the semifinals, but uh, he definitely uh, worked his way through that. And that was not an easy bout. No, Blaine took some punishment there, but great sportsmanship. That's some heart right there. Yeah. Boy, I don't know how he got it out of that. That was just, I don't know how he did not submit to that. Oh, one in the second round, advancing to the semifinals, Nick D. We got quite a lineup. Mike Penobler, Jeremy Jackson, Adam Lynn, and Nick Diaz for the semifinals. Yeah, I don't think you could have picked a better uh, semifinal lineup, even if you uh, planned it. By the way, the, all these fights were drawn by lottery, but uh, boy, I don't think you could have planned it better. Well, let's go into our exhibition bouts. Uh, give our tournament fighters an opportunity to rest and bring out some new fighters. Yeah, both these fighters will be making their MMA debut. Entering the ring right now is Ted Stoby from Pacific Martial Arts in Fresno. It's a half crazy purple belt in jiu-jitsu. Never fought before, but uh, very skilled jiu-jitsu player. Hence the bowl constrictor on his right arm and chest. I think that says it all. I think that says it all. Yep. Josh laid it out. He represents Pacific Martial Arts in Fresno, California. Obviously some Fresno fans in the crowd. He fights and trains locally out of Lamore, California. His fighting style, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He is 5 feet 9 inches tall. One hundred and sixty-nine the pounds. He is a U.S. Open Jiu-Jitsu champion and a Rolf Gracie purple belt. 
Welcome Ted Stone. Ted looking very reserved for his MA debut. And then in that it's pronounced Half Gracio, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, that's a common error, though, almost. All yeah, it's actually spelled Ralph, but uh, there's no, uh, the R is uh, pronounced as an H. Okay, now we have David Shores from Hollywood, California, making his entrance. He is a second-degree black belt in karate, and he's making his MMA debut. He's also uh, been training Indian fast wrestling with Art Mendez. To, i, I got to uh, ask you, I've been hearing more and more about Indian fast wrestling. What the hell is that? You know, I really don't know. Um, I know Art's got a good reputation. Uh, it's some form of uh, American Indian uh, ground fighting grappling. It's American Indian or? American Indian, yeah, not East Indian. Interesting. And that's uh, what David Shorts has been training for his ground game, although he's only been doing it for, I believe, about a month. I've but never seen an Indian fast wrestling. Introducing his opponent in the blue corner. He'll be representing Valley Martial Arts in Hollywood, California. He fights and trains out of Sherman Oaks, California. He enters the battle gun at six feet even, 160 pounds. His fighting style, American freestyle karate and Indian fast wrestling. Please welcome, in the blue corner, David Shore! I think what David's going to be looking to do here is uh, keep it on his feet. I don't think four weeks of any kind of ground fighting is going to really train you, especially to take one off Gracie Jiu-Jitsu purple belt. But, uh, and then he's an instructor at Pacific Martial Arts. Well, yeah. Right? Stobie has very little stand-up, but uh, a great deal of experience on the ground. David needs to be looking to knock him out right here. He does not want to go on the ground with Stobie. Well, we know from uh, Pacific Martial Arts and Cole Escovito that uh, they take their ground game seriously over there. Yeah, they've got some good fighters coming up. And there it is. Ted's got the body lock, and he's looking for a trip takedown. David resisting. There it is. And he does cool. not want to get mounted. <laughs> Ted has full mount. That's a very bad place for David to be in. in. Working frantically. See trading uh, the rabbit punches there. David needs to get Ted off the mount right now and protect his arms. And yes, and apparently he needs to protect his face as protect well. Protect his face. Ted did say he was going to try to work on uh, his striking here and uh, not finish with a submission if he could help it. It's got to be killing him with those arms up right there and not taking him. David needs to uh, buck up. He needs to get Ted off this mount. He needs to slide him down to his hips and escape out of there. Oh, he's in trouble now. Ted's tying right. up the arms. Up the arms. This is... Uh, Look at this. And he's just picking his shots. David this needs to get out of this position right now or there's going to wind up a stoppage. Yes, this is... He's not doing anything to protect himself. This is Jiu-Jitsu Valley 2 Doe at its finest. David needs to get Josh out of there. You can see Josh leaning forward. But yeah. Looks like Josh is getting ready to stop this. Yeah. Yeah, sure enough. Well, David was blocking most of those. It was, uh, or a lot of those. A lot of those were getting in. It was, safety is the primary concern. We don't want any of the fighters injured here. Well, Ted didn't show off too much of his uh, Jiu-Jitsu, did he? No. In the first round, the winner. Local does good, Ted Stone! Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt uh, Jeff Wells' <laughs> announcer. No. Yeah, I had to have been killing Ted with the uh, arms up in that position. But uh, he followed through with his game plan and worked on his striking. Well, it doesn't look like our semifinal uh, fighter is going to have much of a rest, apparently. No. Good effort by David Shores. It was his first fight. Uh, he wanted to get in there and test his skills. Mike Penobler making his way into the ring, getting ready to start our semifinals. This is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to this. we got uh, Mike Penobler versus Jeremy Jackson for the first fight, correct? That is correct. So Jeremy Jackson will be taking on another wrestler. Let's see how he uh, plans this one. 
I really believe that all the cave maidens should dress like uh, like that Heather cave maiden that just walked in, Mike. Well, I'll tell you, I think it's a pleasure to have him walk by our table. <laughs> this is the eight-man King of the Mountain semifinal. He represents the Shark Tank fight team. He hails from San Bernardino, California, and enters the battle gone at five feet nine inches tall, 169 pounds. Welcome back, Mike Pin Obler. I'll tell you, while we're talking about the heart of the fighters, what about the heart of these cage maidens? Okay, it's freezing cold, and they're out here in swimsuits. You gotta love those girls. Uh, and Mike, I can see your breath, so that's how cold it is. <laughs> but even when it, I can see your breath during the summer, so that's probably not much. <laughs> no, I think that's totally uncalled for. <laughs> wow, the judges on the uh, Queen of the Mountain contest tonight are going to have a, a tough, tough time making a decision here tonight, I think. Yes, and apparently uh, Jeremy's a special guy because he has Tina Turner walking him out. <laughs> Wow, these girls are beautiful. The fighters are just phenomenal. What a what a great event tonight. I'm having a good time, except for the weather. Yes. And you know what I gotta tell you, it really sucks the fact that it rained today. It's damp, and his it's freezing. In the blue corner. He represents Team Freedom and he fights out of Imperial California. He enters the battle gone at 5 feet 10 inches tall, 169 pounds. Welcome back, Jeremy, the Scorpion Jackson. Yeah, I got to say, we're coming off like four straight months of 100 degree weather. And, uh, of course, the night of the event, it's uh, freezing and raining. All right, enough complaining. Let's get on to uh, the first bout of the semifinals. A little bow, show respect to your opponent. That's a staple in the IFC. Touch of the gloves. And, uh, oh, what do we got? Oh, I believe Mike Penobler's complaining about uh, moisture in the ring. Go as figure. We, yep, as we were just <laughs> saying. We'll get that cleaned up and get right on. Quick flurry by Jeremy. Jeremy's got some lightning fast hands. Mike's going to be looking to take him down. I don't think he wants to trade too much with Jeremy. I think he wants to get him down and ground and pound him. Both fighters working in the clinch, looking for an advantage. Looks like a low knee there. Oh, Ooh. sharp punch. Oh, oh man. man, walked into that. Another left hand. Oh. And it's done. He walked right into Jeremy. Jeremy's got dynamite in that left hand. I don't think uh, Penalver knows where he's at yet. Well, Jeremy Jackson progresses to our finals with... Uh, <laughs> well, considering that Jeremy uh, actually expended most of the energy in his first fight, uh, this is quick. Yeah, he needs the rest. The winner at 48 seconds in impressive fashion, advancing to our eight man final, Jeremy the Scorpion Jackson. I gotta look at uh, Jeff when he's about to make an announcement because I, uh, I keep interrupting him. Yeah, he's gonna get pissed off. Yeah. That's okay. I'll deal with it. All right, entering the ring for the second time tonight, Adam Lynn from the Next Generation Fight Team. Adam is going to have a tough fight here with Nick Diaz. Both fighters, uh, jiu-jitsu backgrounds. Uh, Nick probably better with the hands. And I'm not sure who's going to be better at takedowns. This should be a good fight. It should be a technical fight. Introducing first into the battle gun on my left, representing the red corner. 
He represents the new generation fight team. He fights out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and enters the battle gun at 5 feet 8 inches tall, 169 pounds. He has an MM record of two wins, one loss. Welcome back, Adam Lynn. Boy, Adam sure doesn't look uh, winded or fatigued at all. I think he uh, reserved uh, some strength in uh, his first match. It should be interesting because both these guys have tremendous ground skills. Yeah, I would expect to see a submission here, and I would expect to see a very technical ground game. Although, Nick is uh, not afraid to drop bombs, and uh, actually neither is Adam, but I think both fighters would feel much more comfortable on the ground. Here's Nick entering the ring for the second time tonight. Herb Dean also refereeing this bout. His opponent. He represents the Caesar Gracie fight team. He fights out of Stockton, California, and enters the battle gun at six. They tall, 169 ready to go pounds. Please welcome in the blue corner, California Warner, fighters. Nick D. Yeah, all the fighters except the super fighter, uh, California fighters. Nick looks confident, ready to go. Herb Dean bows them in, and we're on. The last fight of the semifinals. Jeremy Jackson will be taking on the winner of this fight for the finals and title of King of the Mountain. It's kind of an unorthodox stance that Nick has there. You know, I haven't seen him use it before. I think he's been working on his boxing skills. and uh, That's not a boxing stance. Well, it's a uh, baiting stance, <laughs> but uh, you need to keep that right hand up, I think. But Nick is a very confident fighter. He may be uh, just trying to open uh, Adam up with that. Nice kick. Nice kick. Not much on it, but uh, Adam returns. Nick gives nice a uh, push kick. kick. <clears throat> kind of just filling each other out right now. Yeah, this is a this is a big fight. Both these uh, fighters are very skilled. I don't think either one wants to make a mistake. Nick's starting to get busy though. Adam's in on the clinch. Knee from Nick. Nick's been pretty effective in uh, using the knees in the clinch these last two fights. Yeah, Nick's just very well rounded. He was getting them in on Blaine. I'm excited to see what happens if this goes to the ground. And, and well, it does. <laughs> we'll find out right now. <laughs> My prayers have been answered. God, that mat must be hard. You hear that one? Every time they hit the ground, you can hear that thud. It's solid. We've got here Nick looking very comfortable on his back. Nice quick kick. He's up. You notice Adam uh, stalks his opponent when they're on the ground. Yeah, he's looking for that opening. I think uh, the both fighters are making a liar of me again. I'm not having much luck. Ooh, almost pushing him out. Nick manages to stay in the ring. Nick defending the, that knee. The uh, the battle gone, rather. Battle gone. I like that name. I do too. I like it a lot, and it looks like it too. You know, I mean, it, this is a great looking ring. I don't know if you can, uh, if the audience can see it. Um, from the camera angles, but from here live, it's it's a great looking ring. Well, I may get another chance to see some uh, ground game from these two fighters. Adam takes uh, Nick down. Nick's got full guard again. He's very dangerous from here, but this is not uh, this is not a uh, new area to Adam either. Oh, Nick shoots for that arm bar. Adam defends. Nick's going for a triangle. No, nope. there triangle it is. Oh, very yes. nice. Quick. Well, after uh, after the arm bar on Blaine Turner, uh, I would think that the he would want one that works. <laughs> well, you know, I think on a normal human being it would. <laughs> Blaine Tyler has an uh, abnormal pink color.
So he mixed it up pretty well. He saw some good stand up, some clinching, groundwork, and finishing with an arm bar. Yeah, and a very technical, uh, very technical finish. I like that. I think as the fans become more educated, we're going to, uh, I think the fans here will appreciate it more also. Well, here we go. This is going to be something else. Yeah, this is going to be Jeremy Jackson incredible versus final. Nick Diaz. And Steve Heath walking out. Uh, Brett our, Bergmark. Yeah, our super fight of the evening. Brett Bergmark, a uh, Cedar Grace Blue Belt. He's coming off a big win in uh, Hawaii. He'll be taking out Brian Ebersole out of, uh, I believe it's Chicago, Illinois. It's a, it's a town outside of Chicago. Both fighters with wrestling backgrounds. Very tough. 185, correct? Yeah, in a way bout at 185. Rip Bergmark had very short notice on this fight. He looks ready either way. Yeah, I think he probably keeps himself in shape. Kind of neat to in this sport. Yeah, they get a lot of uh, late calls, and if you want to fight, you need to be ready. Yep, last minute replacements. Well, I think it's a nature. I mean, the guys just get, they train so hard. That, that it's not uncommon for injuries to occur, especially as right before a, a bout when they're training at their hardest. But you probably shouldn't be doing I would think that they would uh, rely on cardio the last Yeah, the last week, week or, or so, or yeah. But a lot of these guys are pushing right to the end and injuries occur. Speaking as a matchmaker, it makes me crazy. But I think <laughs> it's, it's nature of the nature of the sport. These guys are incredible athletes. Pain Inc. is uh, certainly represented here. Yeah, a lot of the fighters wearing Pain Incorporated. As well as should. One of yes. the... One of the... Well, the greats. You can't call them grandfathers because it's not that old yet, but one of the uh, fathers of the sport, definitely. Brian Johnson. And, uh, Brian Johnson is uh, just an incredible guy, and he's, he does have quite a lineup of apparel now. He represents Caesar Gracie Fighting. His fighting style, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Chencho, and General Mayhem. He enters the battle gone at 5 feet 9 inches tall, 185 pounds. He is a Caesar Gracie blue belt. Welcome, Brett Bergmar. And introducing his opponent on my right in the blue corner. He represents American Kickboxing Academy. He hails from Port Charleston, Penny. Illinois. His fighting style, submission. He enters the battle gone at six feet tall, 185 pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of 22 wins, six losses, no ties. Please welcome Brian Eversol. Well, both fighters look ready for this. This will be a three five minute rounds. Yeah. Brian's uh, wrestling base, he's got good submissions. He's got uh, pretty decent uh, stand-up. Um, I haven't seen Brett fight before, but being a Caesar Gracie blue belt, I'm sure he's going to uh, have uh, phenomenal ground skills. And uh, he's supposed to be quite a brawler as well. Oh, oh, good left hand right on the button. Oh. Lifts him up, carries him across the ring. Single leg and uh, the battle Brian gone. depends. The battle gone. Get it right, John. No, no, I'm working on it. Both fighters locked up in a clinch. Both fighters looking for that big takedown, I think. Yep, there's an attempt. No knee exchange there. Oh, uh, Brian is looking for a big takedown. Brett says, I don't think so. Brian's definitely known for his uh, aerial takedowns. Good direction changes here. Crowd's making quite a bit of racket here. Oh, there it beautiful is. takedown by Bergmark. 
and he goes right to half guard. He's looking to pass. Ebersol is defending well. Brett needs to watch his face. You can kick up from the bottom here. He's trapping his foot there to keep from getting kicked. And he is in Ebersol's half guard. Let's see if he works the pass or if he decides to soften Ebersol up a bit. Neither fighter doing much. If there's not some movement here, they're going to get stood up. There we go. Brett's trying to come around. Russell not really doing much. Not a lot that he can do from this position except defend. Brett stands up and oh, oh nice going push up kick. and over. Both of them back on their feet now. You can watch those knees. They're a perfect opportunity right there. Half-hearted attempt at a leg kick by Ebersol. Bergmark answers with a right hand and another one. Neither one having much effect. Nice exchange, yeah. Bergmark working that arm in guillotine. Don't really think he's going to be able to power through that. Is that a real strength move? I mean, when you're like that, it, it, you really have to torque it, or does it require a, a big... No, standing like that, it does. On the ground, it's more of a... Uh, well, it still requires strength on the ground, but it's more of a technique when you can close the guard and stretch them out. But uh, on your feet like that, it's purely a power move. Looks like Brett may be setting up for a takedown here. Ebersol pins him to the ropes. Both fighters very powerful. That's going to use a lot of uh, energy up, though. Takes a tremendous amount of energy to fight out of the clinch like this. Oh, oh. straight over. On his face. Ebersol goes for the single leg. And Bergmark lands have any of it. Bergmark does not want to go down here. No, Bergmark's working on standing guillotine again. It's taken down. Should he take his back here? Depends on what he wants to do. It looks like he's working for a submission. Now, there we nope, go. He's, he's got his leg. Okay, there we well, go of it now, so. He's uh, too high. He's going to have difficulty getting in the back. I believe he's going to try to work a submission out of the, the high end right there. He's looking for that arm, I believe. Stands up, gets dragged back down, and now Ebersol's on top. That's a dangerous move right there, crawling forward into his feet. Well, there is a counter to every move out there. It's who plans far enough ahead and who performs the, uh, the fastest and the cleanest. <laughs> and it looks like Ebersol may be letting Brett back up. We'll see what happens here. The crowd sure seem to be enjoying themselves. Especially during a quick break here. Everybody's running off to get their, uh, fill their beers. I, I don't know how they do it. It's freezing out here, and these people are pounding the ice-cold beverages. Yeah, oh, and we've got one of our Queen of the Mount contestants in the ring now. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't want to be the judge of that contest. Looks like we're getting ready to get started. Nice, uh, nice mouse on the eye of uh, Brian Ebersole. There were some solid exchanges. I think both guys are a tad winded here. 
Yeah, well, fighting as much as they did in a clinch, I would expect them to be tired. That's, you have to exert a lot of energy there. Both fighters, fairly heavy hitters. They both appear to be looking for that one big punch, that big uh, haymaker there. But they're not getting them. Now both fighters have good chins. Very evenly matched bout. Lost his footing there. Ubersol is going after it now. Ubersol unloading on Bergmark. Oh, and they almost pop out almost of the ring. out of the octagon. The Oop, battle the gone. Battle gone. Well, it is the shape of an octagon. But it's not an octagon cage. So no trademark infringements there. Excellent. <laughs> Can't trademark a shape. <laughs> oh, Good very knee. nice knee. Good knee by Ebersol. Didn't have a great deal of effect on Bergmark. Bergmark stalking Ebersol. Looks like he is just looking to unload. Ebersol backing up. I don't know. He's wind. looking to catch his, yeah, catch his breath. Bergmark once again stalking forward. I don't know if that's a good idea, keeping those hands down at that close a distance. Yeah, that would be uh, pretty risky. Bergmark throwing some bombs. Not really landing them, but uh, not for lack of effort. Yeah, that's... Actually, it was both of them. Ah, good point. Good point. Both fighters seeming content to trade some blows here. I think they're trying to catch a second wind. Ebersol shoots for the double leg. Press sprawl. It sprawls out, and let's see where we go from here. Oh, Ooh. nice knee. And that is legal in uh, IFC, under IFC rules. rules. It was not directly to the crown of the head. Herb's telling him to stop with the knees there to the top of the head, it looks like. Yeah, that, that would be directly into the crown, and that yep. would be a violation. Rich got the arm in guillotine again, but not trying to set it, keeping his hips back. He's not wanting to get taken down. Nice knee, and what a brawl. Both these guys are just throwing leather. Ebersol visibly winded here. I think Bergmark a bit winded also. Oh yeah, there it is. Hands on the knees, not a good sign. Brett looking to wind up. We may not make it to the third round. Oh, very nice left. He's almost taking the same stance that uh, Nick Diaz had, keeping that hand down. The, the baiting stance, as you put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as he's walking backwards, he's all right. But uh, hopefully he does not forget. Oh, Boom. nice exchange. Heavy hands by Bergmark. And they are tied up. He was nice attempt yep. at a takedown. And looked nice like he was attempt at an arm bar. I was going to say, it looked like he was going for the arm on the way down. Beautiful. Just stepped over, but... Uh, Ebersol able to escape. Ebersol on top in the full guard. Bergmark taking a couple shots to the head from, from the guard there. Bergmark's legs open. Maybe trying to set something up here. Or create some distance because he took a couple shots to the head there. But they're going to keep exchanging and I don't know if Dean's going to stand him up or let him continue. No, neither fighter afraid to exchange on the ground, that's for sure. You were so looking. I don't think those punches amount to too much, nothing behind him. No, I think both fighters are very fatigued at this point. 
Bird Mark wants to get up. Wow, we made it through the second round. These guys are winded. He was all hands on his knees. Brett making it back to his corner. This is a good brawl here. These guys are really putting it on the line. I think our uh, cameraman is enthralled with uh, Ring Girl, who's oh. obviously experienced at sign language. Yes, she, uh, she seems to be enthralled with one of the, uh, the audience there. Good, good uh, crowd relations. <laughs> good commentator relations, too, because uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, top appeared to be see-through. Well, maybe she's trying to uh, get extra points with the judges. Worked for me. Back I'm in not round judging, three. Though. That, would, that wouldn't be good. Round three. I think my wife wouldn't uh, appreciate it since. No, but I would volunteer to videotape the beating she'd give you. Yeah. Yes. That would be a quick submission. <laughs> Both These fighters guys appear are to have got another wind. Yep. A third Still or fourth exchanging. Wind. <laughs> and they are going for it. But what a slugfest. Certainly some great exchanges during this fight. Ibersaw using those knees. Didn't appear if any of those connected. Uh, oh, and Brett returns the favor. Nice knee to the chest. Yeah, both these guys are very tired right now. But game, neither one willing to uh, give Watch it up. closely, though. I mean, this is you can see how cold it is. Look at their breath. Yeah, look at my breath. Uh, I don't want to look at your breath. <laughs> see, but theirs is like a foggy white. Yours is green. Can I get you a beer, Mike? Yeah, I, I need another beer. <laughs> Actually, I need uh, something warm, perhaps a shot. A light exchange there. Yeah, both guys are very fatigued here. Brian walking forward, throwing blows, pressing the action there. Certainly might be using up the last of what he has, though. This is the last round. Let's... Uh, well, how do you call it? Who, do you, who would you give this to? I would say uh, at this point... Oh, nice trip takedown. That's pretty tough. I would have to say uh, Ebersol right now, but not by much. Only because of his uh, aggressiveness. He has come out in the last two rounds and drove forward with uh, a flurry of punches and the takedowns as well. And, uh, you know, Brett's been defending himself against the takedown pretty well, but, uh, but Ebersol's been getting them. So I, I would say Ebersol right now. Uh, I wouldn't like to call it. I'm not sure. I, I think it's very, very equal. Both fighters have... Uh, well, that's what I said. It'd be very, yeah. very close. I, I, you know what? I don't think I'm going to go out on a lamb. <clears throat> I think it depends on the judges. No, 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 no. It's not. You know, Paul Smith says that best. Uh, just don't leave it up to the judges. The judges just are three people that have the best seats in the house, but they shouldn't make decisions on the fights. Fighters need to do that. Well, they better get busy. You were still working in uh, Bergmark's close guard. Herb taking a close look at this. They may be getting close to a stand-up. It's interesting how uh, Ebersol is moving around to keep them pointed towards the center of the ring as opposed to under the ropes. Well, he is on top. And I uh, think he can relax a little more down here. Getting some nice shots in. And Herb standing him up. Yep. Back to the center of the ring and they'll be restarted on their feet. Oh, very nice right there. 
didn't seem to affect uh, Bergmark though. No, the angry hick has a tough chin. Angry hick. Yeah, that's his uh, nickname. Although I don't know why he's uh, maybe the way he fights, but he is just truly a nice individual. Oh, nice oh, and out of, out the, of the, ring. the ring. He's a nice, uh, well-mannered country boy. Yes, he is. I saw him prior to the event. You know, he's sporting a cowboy hat and the whole works. You know, Good so guy, much. tremendous heart. I mean, these athletes tonight, it's amazing. They've, they've all just worked very hard, shown a lot of heart. Yeah, there it is. Apparently I was wrong. The judges will be deciding this fight, which is a shame. Well, you know, you always would like the fighters to be able to, but a lot of times you get equally matched uh, fighters in there. They're giving their all, but... Uh, Knockout's not always possible or a submission. Well, they're going to have to figure it out. There, and and there they are. Paul Smith, uh, commissioner of the IFC, going over the uh, judges' cards. And one of the editors of Ultimate Athlete Magazine, Tracy Ratzloff there. Lifestyle editor. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges have made their decision. It is a split decision. The winner... Oh, Just goes to show you. Wow, what a slugfest. You never know. Both fighters tired. That was a great fight. Good job by you as well. I mean, uh, you put this fight together. Great matchup. Well, it goes down to the fighters. These guys are just fighting their hearts out. Well, now he's the uh, the happy hick. Yeah, perhaps the happy <laughs> hick. He <laughs> to change his, change his nickname to the happy, the happy hick. All right. Now what we've been waiting for, the finals. To determine who will be king of the mountain. And the Scorpion's going to be coming out first. Jeremy Jackson. Uh, two knockouts. Two knockouts. To Let's see if he fight. can finish this. I gotta tell you, it's, he's gonna have a tough fight here, though. Nick is, uh, wow. I, you know, I just couldn't even make a prediction here. Both fighters very skilled on their feet and on the ground. Come on, let's go out on a limb. Let's, no. Come on. <laughs> let's make a bet right here. Everybody's listening. I couldn't call it. Uh, just both fighters very impressive. I don't know. I'm just excited to be watching the event. This is gonna be a great fight. That's my prediction. A great fight. If you can see it, the smoke is just rolling through here. I don't think that's smoke. I think that's uh, fog. fog coming <laughs> off of you. It could be. I exude manliness. Is that what you call it? Well, actually, I stole that from uh, <laughs> that Von Palele. Von, Von Palele, Palele. <laughs> at the Genesis. He exudes. Come, come worship at the altar of Von Palele. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, he's great. great character. Here we go, Nick Diaz and the Gracie on the garage coming into the ring now. Look at these guys, just jackets, sweatshirts. Of competition. Uh, these guys are having to fight the temperature as well. Yeah, I believe the, the thermometer now is down to 48 degrees. This is not an attempt, because uh, it's hard to, uh, I, I don't know what the camera's going to do, but uh, I don't know if they've shown a distance shot at all, but uh, this is outdoors, and it is very, very cold. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final in the King of the Mountain Eight Man. Introducing first on my right, representing Team Freedom. He'll be fighting out of Imperial, California. Welcome back, Jeremy, the Scorpion Jackson. And his opponent on my left, he'll be representing Caesar Gracie Fight Team. Please welcome back, Nick D. I want to put you on the spot. Uh, what's your prediction for this fight? And I've already, keep in mind, I've already taken a great fight. Yes. My prediction would be, um, I haven't a clue, quite frankly. 
Okay. I like both of these guys. Um, I've spoke to Nick. I like Nick quite a bit. He's a great guy, young guy, good up and comer. Uh, Jeremy, I've never talked to Jeremy, but I know uh, Jeremy. Did. Oh, oh wow. heavy left hand. Well, doesn't look. Old. I'm not even be able to finish my prediction here. Not unexpected. I uh, don't think that was a good call on Nick's uh, part, leaving his hands down. Well, he is just being punished for it as well. Let's see if he can get back to his feet and see if that hand comes hands back up. up. Nick seems no, to he's okay. still got that hand down. Jeremy's got that heavy left. Oh, oh there another. Oh, that's Nick is down. Oh, well, look at the speed. Jeez, they're coming. He, this, oh, he needs to be stopped. That's it. Josh, there you go, Josh. That's a good call, Josh. Wow. Unbelievable. Damn, that would not that have been was, my prediction. No, that was fast. Nick is. N yes. Nick is out on yep. his feet or. Somewhat. Now he's, they're bringing him to his feet. I don't know if that was a great idea. Steve Heath helping him. Wow. Yep, and the doctor stepping in. It's Dr. Judy Miller. Helps us out on our shows. Fantastic doctor. Wow. Nick has never been knocked out like that. That was just too quick. And here it is. Replay. Well, I did not expect that. But I think uh, Jeremy saw the... Uh, Jeremy. The right hand down. Yeah. And Jeremy has that killer instinct. He saw it and he went after it. Well, I gotta tell you, That's I think he'd have been better off dropping his gentlemen. left hand. Um, I think uh, Jeremy hit harder with his left hand. Yeah, that was final. three for three. Wow. I think Nick still four, a bit confused. Nine seconds he in the didn't first even know the battle was the over. Winner, Jeremy the Scorpion Jackson. Wow. Jeremy Jackson wins the King of the Mountain with three knockouts. All three by fights. all by a left. To present the IFC America's welterweight champion, we have IFC Commissioner Mr. Paul Smith with the belt. Also John. You know.